Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Welcome to Chicago, the home of the skyscraper. Welcome to the Council on Tall Buildings, the home of the skyscraper. And welcome to the Council on Tall Buildings 2006 annual conference, Thinking Outside the Box, Tapered, Tilted, Twisted Towers. We have a really great lineup of speakers today. And we have a great lineup of backup speakers. Um, and we have a fascinating subject. We also have three great exhibitions outside, which I hope you'll visit. We've got uh, the exhibition from the speakers. We've got a Liberty Science exhibition looking at uh, skyscrapers of the future. And we've got a Fazlo Khan exhibition presented by the IIT. So please take some time up and, and look at that. Uh, before I start, I'd like to thank the three main sponsors of the, this conference. Uh, without the sponsorship, it wouldn't be viable for us. Um, I'd particularly like to thank Turner Construction, uh, mainly because we missed their advert out of the uh, program um, and uh, our, a mistake by our printer. Uh, the other two sponsors, main sponsors, are Gale International and Solomon Cordwell Blanks. They've made this event possible. I would also like to thank Bovis Lendlease, a sponsor and also uh, the organizer of the site visits, uh, which many of our overseas visitors went to yesterday. And also the John Buck Company. We have record-breaking attendance numbers this morning, although I think a few of them have been stuck in traffic. Uh, we have over 650 people signed up, and 50 or so appeared to sign up this morning. This is one of the biggest turnouts for a single track seminar, that, a single track conference that the, the Council has ever had. So I'm very pleased and I think it's a reflection of the speaker lineup we have as well as the subject matter. So before I start, a few points of order. We have two fire escapes here and four fire escapes uh, at the back. Just go out to the building uh, in the event of a fire alarm. Please turn off your cell phones. Uh, and please uh, do not walk up and down the corridors while speakers are speaking. Try and keep to the back and move between speakers. You can do it whilst I'm speaking, that's not a problem, but uh, it can be distracting. Students, welcome. I'm very pleased to attend. I'm not sure I see that many of you, a lot have signed up. I guess it's a bit early for students. But many of the students have, uh, uh, there's a lot of students from IIT and many of the other uh, colleges in the area. Students from IIT, can you please act as hosts and look after the visiting students? You will be eating in the cafeteria across the way, which is the OMA building. It's worth the visit. Please don't eat in the ballroom. That's reserved for registered guests only. We have over 100 guests from overseas attending this conference. And some of these visitors include the leading lights in tall building design from around the world. And I'm particularly keen to, that the visitors to Chicago, of which I'm one, get a great impression of the city and a great impression of the council and its events. I know that Chicagoans are passionate about tall building design and I look forward to the visitors getting a good impression because Chicago is home of the council and home of the skyscraper. Recently there's been a, a resurgence of growth in the, the council and I believe that's been fueled by four things. First of all, People are building taller buildings than ever before. The Burj Dubai is going to set a, a, a new record, but nobody knows quite where that's going to be. So there are many plans for even taller buildings. Um, in one of my recent newsletters, I predicted that in 2030, the Black Frank Lloyd Bright Mile High building will be achieved 
albeit in a different form. I still believe that. It's also been, the, the, the re-interest in the council has also been fueled by a worldwide boom in tall building construction, affecting everywhere from Dubai to New York to Chicago, uh, many places. The interest in the council has also been fueled by performance-based design, and I think that this is going to be one of the key drivers in the future, because as engineers and architects are able to simulate buildings and work out how they perform, the they, people are reviewing the codes and whether or not the codes are correct, because they can actually model the performance of the buildings, both from a, a wind perspective, from a fire perspective, from a seismic perspective. And you'll hear a bit more about that from our working groups. And finally, but not least, one of the reasons that there is a, an interest in the council is because of the, the development of the technology is allowing architects and engineers to achieve buildings like they have never dreamed of before. And, uh, and this is creating a lot of unusual, improbable skyscrapers. And this is the subject that we're here today to d discuss. It is this, this creation of these iconic buildings and improbable skyscrapers that brings all of you here, and we're here to learn and to talk about our experiences in this particular field. And I'm very pleased that we've got a, a great mixture of architects, developers, engineers, and specialists, all of whom are working on these types of buildings. There's much to discuss. Many of these unusual towers have really quite unusual challenges and need particular care and attention in design that you don't get with the regular buildings. And that's what we're going to learn about today. You know, such as tapered towers, how do you deal with the changing floor plates, how do you lease them, how do you do the interiors, how do you do the curtain wall. With tilted towers, how do you make them stand up, how do they perform in extreme events. Um, for twisting towers, how do you clean the glass. Um, there are many, many aspects of this that are unusual and different. And because of the need to understand and learn, people are interested in the council. And one of our primary goals is to share information. In recent years, we've put a lot of effort into publishing uh, case studies. And we are going to uh, review and, and uh, restart that, particularly focusing on some of these unusual buildings. So I'd encourage you to take a good look around the exhibitions. Um, please bear in mind that it's quite unusual to see so many iconic buildings in close proximity to each other. One of the, the, the reasons uh, is one of the, the exciting things about them is that you have a, one or two of these together in a, a, an urban setting with more regular buildings, it adds vitality to that urban setting. Uh, the steering group of the council met at the, um, in, the, in March this year and one of the things that we did was disband all our existing working groups and committees. And we decided that we wanted to focus on areas where we could make a difference. And we set a plan to create and re-establish four working groups. The seismic group, the, the, um, the sustainable group, the progressive plan, Claps group and the um, fire and safety group. And we have been quite successful in, in starting these groups and some are much more advanced than others. And at the start of both the day sessions we're going to have a, an update from the, uh, the working group uh, leaders. And uh, I'd like to introduce Rob Smilowitz who's going to give us a brief update of the Progressive Plats Working Group and Simon Lay, 
who's walking in with great aplomb right on uh, the time he's been spent a nice hour in traffic this morning is later going to talk about the fire working group enjoy the conference have fun meet people um, and it's over to you to make it successful thank you